You're listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author Sarah Box, where you get the inside scoop on the steps action takers and decision makers take to align their purpose to their principles and achieve their goals in business and life. We focus on the mantra, no labels, no limits, no excuses. Each week, you'll hear from remarkable guests who have overcome challenges and obstacles to succeed in the face of adversity. By listening to their stories, you'll get practical tips, tools, and resources you can implement today to bust through your own internalized prisons of worry and doubt. And now, without further ado, please welcome your commanding coach with plenty of chutzpah and heart, Sarah Box. Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and I want to thank you so much for downloading this episode of the No Labels, No Limits podcast. And as you know, it's a podcast all about shedding our limiting labels and beliefs so that we can shine our light into the world. And I believe without a doubt that we are each much more capable than we imagine or give ourselves credit for. And that when we clarify our purpose and we align with our values and goals and then declare our intentions for good into the world, we can really create a positive ripple effect. Um, that will extend far beyond us. So if you are someone who has an undeniable pull to be a light in the world, to leave a legacy for good, um, and you want to join along with us and other brilliant men and women, be sure to connect with us through our website at Sarah at sarahbox.com so that we never lose sight of you. Anyway, let's get on with our um, interview for today. Uh, um, folks who don't listen or do podcasts, um, often don't realize that, as usual, we typically do technical checks. There's stuff that happens a couple of days before as well, but you make sure everything's working. Um, usually it goes off without a hitch. Today was not that day, um, and we won't go into the, the details on it, but I will tell you that I've learned something about our guest today by her graciousness, how she shows up, and how she navigates uh, challenges and obstacles with a good heart. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Her name's Elizabeth Bruner, and she has been examining our collective, our human collective perceptions of fashion. And this has been a long process for her of learning and unlearning the rules. Um, and this journey has been, continues to be deeply personal for her. And it began when she was a young girl, and she would watch her mom so close. I remember that myself, Elizabeth. So um, and it sticks in your head. So it started back then, but she has since gone on and she's launched a company called Stereotype as her way to share a joyful, blended vision of kids' clothing and to advocate for self-expression of all humans, especially the small ones. Um, and she does this by breaking fashion rules, disregarding boundaries we put around what boys and girls should wear. Um, encouraging a more playful, creative, expressive sense of self for all of us. And, and don't we all need a little more playful sense of self? I, I certainly do, Elizabeth, because um, it's so easy to get too serious about things. So welcome to the podcast. I'm super happy to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and talk to you. I'm, I'm glad to have you here as well. I have thought about watching my daughter raise her kids and sometimes I'm looking at what they've chosen to wear and I'm thinking well isn't I wonder what was going through their head when they put that particular outfit together right and you never know which child's going to be wearing the same piece of clothing so it's always been interesting so when I found I had an opportunity to have you as a guest I was really um, interested and excited about it um, but I do like to ask all of our guests a question about whether or not there's something you do every day that keeps you motivated with your life to inspire people through your work, just if you have a particular habit or practice. I do. Yeah, I do have a practice. Um, I spend a lot of time outside. Um, I have I live in uh, Northern California, so there's a lot of beautiful scenery, lots of trees. Um, I try to ground myself by taking long walks and just observing the outside world so that I don't take myself too seriously. Um, and I, I try to keep my, my vision very simple. You know, I'm doing this for my own kids. So it, it really helps me stay focused in, in all the chaos that happens with starting a business. Um, 
I can just come back to the simple fact that I started this for my kids and I'm committed to it. Wow. So talk about focus and clarity, <laughs> right? It's easy, when you feel pulled off track, you can just go, wait a minute, who am I doing this for? And you've got exactly. a physical right in front of you. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about your journey. You know, you started back watching your mom sew. How did that influence you? And when did you know that you wanted to do fashion? Wow. I, you know, I started watching my mom sew as a young child and I would go with her to the fabric store and pick out fabrics and I would collect all her scraps and would wrap them around my Barbies and make outfits for them. And it really wasn't until many years later that I realized that, oh, I, I really should be in fashion. I was studying interior architecture um, in 2004 and decided that that was not really a place that felt right to me. And I found myself in the fashion department at my college and started spending more time there and things just kind of clicked from there. I was like, oh, this is where I need to be. This is, I kept finding myself looking at the clothes that the students were making and going into the classrooms and just spending a lot of time there. I'm like, well, this is obviously the place I need to be. Um, so that journey was, you know, pretty long just in terms of it wasn't a realization that I had like, oh, I'm going to grow up and be a fashion designer. I was always interested in fashion, but I didn't um, I didn't see myself being a designer per se of clothing. I just thought I want to be a designer. I want to create. Um, so it was great that uh, I finally came to the conclusion that I found my place in fashion and just have stuck with it since. Did you, you know, you were starting down a particular path in college, right? And you talked about design and you said architecture, right? Mm -hmm. So how far along were you in your path? When, did you finish and do architecture and do that for a while? Or did you just, like when you said you found more time in the classroom and realized that was where you wanted to be, start making that shift in college? Yeah, so I was probably a year in to um, architecture. I had taken an internship in London uh, for an interior architecture internship and uh, spent six months in London and really got a good taste of what that world was. And it was very exciting, very exciting to be in London and learn about it. And when I came back and um, reentered college to study interior architecture, I was probably a year in um, realizing, oh, even though I had these great experiences in London and I, and I was excited to come back and continue the journey, it really wasn't where my heart was. And, um, you know, that, that takes a lot of reflection. And I just remember thinking, okay, if I'm not excited to be sitting in this classroom where I'm studying interior architecture, then I shouldn't be here. Um, so I think for me, it was just really listening to myself, um, and following my heart. When you did that, um, were you supported by the other people in your life or were any of them saying, well, wait, 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 I thought you were going to be an architect. <laughs> I was supported, actually. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, my 20s were very, you know, as they are, you're searching for what you're doing. So and that's exactly what I did. I mean, I traveled, you know, I, I lived overseas, you know, I, I took different courses, I took night classes, you know, I, I really dabbled in a lot of things before I found my true calling in design. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny to think back uh, about that journey, and to realize how far I've come and the choices that I've made have really been um, when I've taken the time to be self-reflective and really listen to what I want. So let's talk about stereotype, your brand, right? And when you started it and what your, you said you knew your purpose was your kids. You started it for your kids. But let's talk a little bit more about it, about the concept, what you want to do with it so that our audience can kind of hear um, that bigger vision. Yeah, so I started the idea for Stereotype in 2018, so I've been at it for a few years now. And it really came when I was watching my boy-girl twins um, share clothing. Um, at a very young age, about four years old, they started to dress from each other's wardrobes. And I realized that they were finding a lot of joy in the clothing that they were selecting, even though it wasn't specifically made for their gender. Um, and so that was a great, you know, um, sort of way to come up with an idea for the brand. At first, I was just like, oh, it's, it's great. My son, you know, 
He really likes to wear dresses and skirts and like sparkle. My daughter loves dinosaurs and black and, you know, just stepping out of the way and letting them express themselves and choose the things that they felt good in. Um, I could see on their face how empowered and how happy that they felt. And so that became um, a motivation in the beginning to uh, think about the brand. I didn't realize I was going to start a brand. I certainly wasn't planning on starting a children's clothing brand. But the more I saw my children and how happy they were by being empowered with what they were choosing, the more I realized, oh, I'm, I'm a designer. I need to be designing this line. And I'm really surprised it doesn't exist. Why isn't there an, a line that exists for uh, boys and girls? It's not gender neutral, but really a celebration of both genders. Um, so that's really where I started. And, you know, it's been quite a journey for, for three plus years, you know, especially seeing all the changes socially that have been happening the past, you know, year, two years ago. So, you know, I feel really excited that I'm on this positive sea change that needs to happen culturally. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a really fun journey. So, so what is the difference, if there is a difference? I'm trying to think about this. So you, you base you said your your clothesline is not gender neutral. So for those of us who are going, okay. I don't get it. So what would be different about your clothesline versus me just going to a store and buying a bunch of, you know, you're lucky you have twins, right? So you can go, here you go. You guys pick. But, right. Uh, <laughs> right. So how do I think about this differently? Because it could be that you would have your own like stereotype section in a major store, right? So people know boys, girls, or come to the all inclusive. How does that play out? Because I'm trying to paint a picture in my head and for our listeners about what would be my experience in shopping. So it's a great question. You know, um, so I use the term blended fashion to describe my clothing, and okay. it's really a celebration of both boy and girls wear. So it's not gender neutral. I'm not trying to tone anything down. In fact, I'm trying to highlight um, some of the things that my own kids really love. So my, my son, as I mentioned, he really loves sparkles. My daughter loves black. So you'll see the line is a lot. There's a lot of black and there's a lot of sparkle. Um, so I really just took elements of the clothing that they really love to wear and pulled out those details and started designing the clothing that way. Um, and anyone really can get started with blended fashion. You don't have to buy my clothes in particular. You can just, you know, like take your child shopping and let them pick out things without interfering. So without giving your input, you know, take them to Target, shop both sections, boy and girl. And or, you know, if you have a, a cousin or a friend that has some clothes that, you know, they're ready to pass over to you, then take them no matter if they're for a boy or a girl and just see if your child likes them um, and, you know, give them the freedom to choose. So that's how I, I describe it. How fun. What have been your um, most popular things that you've designed? So we just, we haven't launched yet. We're launching August 8th. So I couldn't tell you uh, the popular items um, for sale, but I can tell you the items that I've made. I made a, uh, a modern sweatshirt, which is basically, a, it's a blazer. It's made out of sweatshirt material. Um, it's very cozy, very soft. It's great play wear. So I updated some items in my collection um, and just made them more uh, modern. And I also created a, um, a skirt that is also shorts. So it's a skirt. It's called an athletic skirt and it has a denim overlay that's pleated with athletic shorts underneath. So I've created some pretty unique items that um, look great on both genders. And I'm they look great on my son, they look great on my daughter. So it's really exciting to see both of them use the clothes, play in the clothes and have fun and feel like they're empowered and they're being true to themselves. Love skirts. They are like the most practical, <laughs> cute things to have, right? Long skirts, short skirts. But they're so useful and fun. So I, that just is so great to hear. Um, what have been your kids' reactions to know that they're the kind of the spark of all of this and where you're taking it? 
Yeah. So they're just, they're so excited. They're so aware that they're the inspiration. And I've really brought them along the journey from the very beginning, obviously being the inspiration and, um, you know, looking at the clothing that they love to wear naturally, but just talking to them about oh, what is it that you like about this? Why do you like this shirt or these pants or this skirt? And really just involving them in the creative process. Um, they're, you know, they're great kids and they, um, they're very open hearted and they're just so excited that they get to be the brand ambassadors and talk about it. You know, my, my son, Jacob said, you know, mommy, does this mean everyone can wear a skirt now? Once this clothing line, is that what that means? So he's very aware of the impact that, um, stereotype will have. Um, on himself, but also on others. So they're both very open hearted about this isn't just about us. It's about all, all kids. And so that's been such a wonderful, um, experience. And it's certainly enriched our bond and has deepened it. And, you know, there's so much more to do together. So I'm very excited about that. So have you had challenges along the way in doing this? You know, going from concept to, I mean, you're really right around one week almost around the corner from your launch on the date that we're recording this. And when it goes live, which will be soon, it'll be before the launch, um, even closer. So <laughs> like getting to this point, what has been one or two of your kind of your biggest challenges? Well, COVID's obviously been a huge challenge, um, especially, you know, trying to get things made, trying to get things produced, trying to find the right fabrics. It's all been, uh, you know, a big puzzle, really just trying to manage the changes that were happening daily. And then also manage my own expectations, my own mental health, because, you know, when you're starting a business, it certainly requires um, a certain level of um, confidence, but also, you know, you have to be able to just be sort of fluid with your expectations. And especially during COVID, you know, it really challenged me in terms of, okay, these dates are going to just have to be pushed back. Um, but I realized too, that, you know, things are going to happen when they're meant to. So in a way I gave myself a lot of permission to just relax because things were going to come together when they were right. And I knew that in my my heart. And so even though that was a challenge and I certainly had my moments where I'm like, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if this is going to happen when I wanted to. Um, I also gave myself some grace to just keep going because it really was an antidote for me for all the stress and worry around those first you know six months of not knowing what's going on. So it's really helped me through um, that time period and just stay focused. Um, so that that was definitely uh, has been a big challenge. And but since then, I've just learned like, OK, I just need to be flexible. And, um, you know, everybody's trying to do this for me and and we're going to get there eventually. So it's interesting, the language that you used. And it makes me wonder if you have um, a deep spiritual connection or something, because you have a lot of trust and faith that things are working for you. People are working alongside you. Is that an accurate statement? That's completely accurate. Um, I, you know, when I had the idea to do stereotype, I actually had to do a lot of deep dive um, reflection on my part because I really had to understand what my own biases and my own stereotypes were and understand where they came from and if they were still valuable to me and if they still resonated with me. And that, that actually took a lot of uh, spiritual work um, to really look at that because it can bring up a lot of anger, sadness, and fear. And it did, it did all of those things. And But I realized that if I'm doing this for my kids and I want my son to be able to go out into the world and wear whatever he wants and my daughter to go out to the world and wear whatever they want and not be judged for it, then I need to be okay with that inside. And I need to figure out whatever it is that's causing me to be worried or fearful for them that um, it's really not them, it's me. And so I need to do that work. And so it really took you know a while for me to get my head around, okay, I need to do this business. It's not just about my own kids, it's about all kids. And if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna give it my all no matter what the ups and downs were. And that takes faith, a lot of faith. And so it's an accurate statement to say, I have strong faith 
Um, I believe that things are meant to happen when they're meant to happen. And that actually is kind of great. I don't have control um, and I don't need to. I just need to keep going. So the reason I had a feeling you were you would be making those points because it's so easy when you feel like it's an uphill walk. Right. And you're just going, oh, my gosh, I'm so tired. Come on, just show me. But you keep going. It's so easy to stop just short of the top. Right. And if you can, you know, so because you've got your anchor as your kids, you know, and the other kids in the world who you see benefiting from this is powerful. Um, so thank you for that. You know, I think that's um, having faith and and doing your own work. So you're not. Um, putting on others, right? Projecting it on or whatever else is, it's such a good role model for us to to know ourselves before we get too far in and think it has to be one way. And to sometimes just, my favorite question when things aren't going my way is, so what does this make possible for me? <laughs> like, can I have a nap now that all my technology is not working? I don't know. Right, right. So, um, at any rate, Tell me something our listeners might be super surprised to learn about you. Super surprised. Um, well, I have a, um, I have chickens. Um, I just got chickens about uh, three months ago, and they are interesting creatures that I've never, uh, you know, had physical contact with. Um, so I have six chickens, and um, I'm cleaning up a lot of poop. So that is maybe, maybe not surprising. I don't know, but it certainly keeps me grounded. I'm like, I can't get too ahead of myself. I'm cleaning up chicken poop like all the time. So <laughs> it does keep things real, doesn't it? It does real fast and they don't care. They'll, they'll poop right on you. They poop in their food. So, uh, you know, I think it's pretty funny to, um, to have these chickens and to learn about them together with my kids and my husband and just, you know, um, you know, have to clean, clean up. It, like I said, it certainly keeps me grounded. And, um, I don't know if that would be a surprise, but that's, that's what's on my, my, uh, chickens and chicken poop. <laughs> yeah. But it's such a great thing that it's a family thing though. It is, it is. And I really, um, we really tried to make a lot of things around our home family oriented. I also have a compost bin with 2000 worms. That might also be very interesting and surprising, um, to hear from from me but um i tried to be very conscious um my clothing line is actually very eco-conscious as well the the fabric from the main um pieces are all made of recycled yarn um so i feel like it, things are very full circle here at my home and i create that through my business as well to be very conscious where do you source your um recycled yarn well, I re you, you, I source them in um, different locations, but this particular one is sourced in LA. So I tried to, everything is made locally or sourced locally within the United States. So everything is made in San Francisco. Um, it's designed in San Francisco. So it's a very um, San Francisco brand. Very local brand to you. Yes. Yeah. And it is very meaningful for me to do that. I really wanted to support local businesses and develop um, relationships with them so that we could continue and to grow together. And that's that's been working so far, and I'm very excited about continuing to do that. Community. Right? Exactly. Community. I know, and the great thing about, like, at least in my opinion, like being web-based is that you can find people quickly and reach out to them, even if they're in your own backyard that you might not have known otherwise. So, um, so, Elizabeth, as we're wrapping this up, tell me some more about um, kind of what you hope. If I were asked having this interview with you a year from now, okay, so uh, you've launched a year. Eh, that's old. Oh, yeah, was I nervous? No, I wasn't nervous. Tell me a year from now, <laughs> where would you like to be? What would you like to be talking about a year from now as it relates to your business and your own success? You know, I really would like to be having a conversation about pushing beyond the stereotypes that we ourselves have um, embedded in our minds and also the ones that we raise our kids with. Um, I've had conversations with people that have kids that are very excited about stereotype and people that don't have kids that are very excited about stereotype because they recognize that this is a powerful brand and they, it resonates with them. 
And so I, I hope it continues to resonate with people and, and we can have conversations about moving beyond the stereotypes and unlearning some things that are damaging for us and our children and raising our children. So um, I also hope to do some collaborations. I think that would be really fun. Um, I'd love to do shoes, um, backpacks. So I have so many ideas and, and so many things that are in the works right now. And this is the first capsule collection. There's actually a, a second one coming. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about all of it. How often will you be releasing your capsule collections? Uh, well, depending on COVID, but um, hopefully for the second capsule collection, it'll come within um, before the, let's see, so I would say in six months. Yeah. Okay. So will you, that's odd, would you be, um, will you be doing a brick and mortar or is this all virtual? This is all online, so it's direct to consumer. Uh, we're selling through um, Instagram and our website at the moment, and with potential to to do a brick and mortar sometime down the road when we can. When we can, when when the universe permits. I I take my my lessons from the universe. If it's time, it's time. I'm going to oh, yeah. know it. Well, and there's a bonus to just being able to do it the way you're doing it now. You know? Yes, I have I have a lot more control, and um, I really built or I'm building this business to suit my own life, not the lives of others. So, um, so I'll get to it. it. It's it's in the works. It's just you know when all the pieces come together, um, they all come together. I know that well. So I bet there are listeners who are saying, "Wait, wait! I want to know where am I going to be able to buy this stuff when it launches?" So. Elizabeth, what, well, there's a couple of things. What are the best ways for people to get connected to you specifically about the clothing? But then secondarily, if somebody wanted, you know, they heard you say, I want to do partnerships and, you know, and, and collaborations, where should those folks connect with you? Because you've got two kind of big paths up ahead of you. I do, yes. Um, so you can connect with me on Instagram at Stereotype Kids Official. Um, and then also our website is stereotypedkids.com. And there's links there that you can reach out and, um, you know, send a note, say hi, give us some feedback, tell us what stereotypes you're, you're facing and you're pushing against. I, I want to hear all of it. So please reach out. Okay. So I want to give the last moment to you to, to wrap us up and tell us what you would tell young Elizabeth who's watching her mom sew, if you could go back and say, hey, honey, let me tell you something, Elizabeth. <laughs> what would you tell her? Oh, boy, what would I tell her? I would say, you just wait. You, you won't believe what you're going to get to design. It's going to be so much fun. Um, I, sh I, I, you know, I have a picture of myself as a young girl, actually, on my desk, and I look at her sometimes, and I think, wow, you're so lucky you get to do exactly what you love. I would just tell her to keep going and have fun. So a message to all of us, keep going, have fun. And Elizabeth, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the No Labels, No Limits podcast. Listeners, if you liked this episode with Elizabeth, do two things. Please rate and review it on whatever your favorite podcast platform is. But more importantly, go to Elizabeth's connection points. We'll have links in the show notes, so don't worry about that. Um, but go find her on Instagram, Facebook, on her website. Let her know what you're up to, what you've learned, and support her in her business launch. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Sarah. It was great to talk to you. You've been listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author, change agent, and strategic vision coach, Sarah Box. You can grab the show notes and find out how to work with Sarah at sarahbox.com forward slash no labels, no limits podcast. We'd love this podcast to reach as many people as possible. So please remember to rate, leave a five-star review and share the podcast with someone you think would get value from this conversation. Until next time, keep taking those daily action steps to align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life.